I want to start with a little bit about me. So I remember when I first said, I want to be a speaker. I want to be a writer. This is what I want to do. Khalas. I was in America for two years. I left the corporate job. I went there. I'm like, this is what I want to do with my life. All right, and I, th I didn't have many, much of a following back then, but I'm like, I need to do something because we were all waiting for something to happen, but I'm like, I need to create this. This was my first poster <laughs> for my first ever uh, event. I did it uh, with the, the team at a place called The Space. It, look how old it was. I actually put my Facebook. <laughs> okay. But you have to take that chance. You have to take that chance. If it's something that, if you know what it is that you want to do, you have to take that chance. And you have to work really, really hard at it. I am exhausted up here right now. Last week was crazy. And this was my week last week. One and a half years later of doing this, this was my week. Am I rich? No. <laughs> I'm still pretty broke. <laughs> All right. Am I, you know, close to my goals? Yes, I'm on my way there. Am I happy? Absolutely. Those smiles, thank you. Like, thank you so much. Greediness, but in a way it's never setting a standard of success for your life. Imagine you told yourself, what's your name? Iman. Iman. Imagine you told yourself, Iman, if I get an A, that's all I ever want. Regardless of what anyone else has gotten, I need an A to get this. And I'm good. If I get that A, I will celebrate, I will do this, I will do that, I will do all these things, regardless. If you even, even if you said success to you was a C. If you set that standard of success for your life, for your education, whatever it is, relative to others, you're gonna be happy. Why? Because you're not comparing yourselves. It's not greed as much as it is it wants someone to have less. It's not your greed, because you got something, you are happy. You're more want wishing that other people have just done a bit worse so you could feel good about your success. Now why am I telling you this? Because this will play a huge role in how you live the rest of your life. How you set that standard for your success. You know what really this is pretty much failure to me when a professor sat there and told me failure in your life is waking up every morning doing something you don't want to do. And I've defined my life as that. Imagine. Because if you, and, and you know, if you think about it, if you wake up in the morning already wanting the day to end, what else is going to get better? Right? Like, do you think if you wake up in the morning wanting the day to end, do you think you're going to have time to find someone that you're going to share your life with? To find that amazing opportunity to engage with your friends, to have fun? No. Because all you're focused on is getting back to bed. <laughs> is waiting for the time that you get home could put on Netflix, order Papa Murphy's, <laughs> and go, this is the, finally, the day is over. What a, what a horrible way to live. And none of us deserve to do that. I see so many youth joining companies. They're so excited. They're so excited to get out into the world, to work, to contribute, to express, to do things they love. And then within a, Two, three months, it's like they're broken by a system that hasn't adapted. Remember, I'm not against, and I repeat this again because I don't want a bunch of fathers calling me saying, why are you talking about our companies like this? I'm not against the companies. All these companies are doing great, great things. But what I'm against is I don't believe they know how to harness all your energy. The working culture hasn't adapted. You don't believe me? I wrote an article on this. I did the research. Even the fundamental of the way we work, 8 to 4.30, 9 to 5, we've all heard of that. You know where that comes from? That comes from the industrial era for production line companies to produce goods. Eight hour days. Do you know how much, you know since when that's been? In 200 years, the way we work, the timing that we work in hasn't changed. We still believe, with all the tools we have today, that we need to work the same as we worked before. No, you don't. If I worked on a production line producing Nissan doors, maybe. But not if I'm in marketing, not if I'm in social media, not if I'm in business development. Who's to say that this is the most productive place? And let's get into that. So I want to start. If you don't understand 
what you want to do in life, you know what's going to happen? Someone's going to come and tell you to do something. That's your parents you talk about, right? Three people. So if you're sitting, imagine your parent, your, your mom says, you know, I go, there's a good job in Enoch. <laughs> go there. Say that, accounting. Accounting. <laughs> Now, what's your response going to be? You're going to say no. And then she's going to ask you a question. Okay, so what are you going to do? <laughs> right? So in that situation, do you think the parents has a right to say those things? Yeah. Now, let's look at a different scenario. Habibi, when you go to Enoch, I spoke to the manager there. He needs someone in a cubicle. Okay, good. Actually, mom, no, I'm not going to do that. Why? Well, I'm in third year university, and I'm thinking of majoring in journalism, doing a master in journalism. You want to be a writer? Yeah, actually, I do. Wallah? Yeah. Actually, to be honest, I'm actually interning this summer at the Gulf News. So I'm going to be interning with them, and I have a mentor already set up that's going to be overlooking my three months that I work there. I'm going to be doing digital journalism, I'm going to be doing multimedia, I'm going to be doing writing, and I'm going to be doing radio. And here's the plan already, I've already set it up and met with them, and they're going to actually approve that. Then after that, I'm also going to this summer spending and applying to the New York University School or Columbia School of Journalism, and I'm actually going to spend a summer there. And when I come back, I've already spoken to three or four companies, and they actually offer uh, jobs for these people. And they're actually sponsoring People who go and do this major. So when I come back, I'll have this opportunity, and I'm gonna. And this is probably the salary range that I'm gonna get as a fresh graduate. How do you know that? Oh well, actually, I've already spoken to three or four people who have done the program. Locals, young, just like me, and they're doing well and they're very, very successful. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> See, what parents are looking for is not for you to have it all figured out. We can't. What they're looking for is an element of maturity. Did you see the, the difference in the two answers? Yeah. One was a little girl or a little boy who didn't know what they were doing. The second was a young lady or a young man that knew exactly what they were doing, that were structured, that were planning, that were looking ahead, that were doing everything they needed to do. Who can respond to that? When you respond that way, you're an adult. You are an adult. They look at you like this. But when you're, you don't, you don't know, they're like, okay, Habibi, don't worry. Mama, I'll take care of you. <laughs> Find someone who's doing what you want to do and learn from them. So if any of you have doubts about what it is that you want to do or worry about it or are concerned, Find someone who's doing it. I had a mentor, Najla Al-Midfa, that's absolutely changed my life. She actually wrote my letter of recommendation to Stanford that as well changed my life. So for her, it was just a matter of me reaching out and saying, I want to learn from you. I want to learn from you. You'd be surprised at how receptive people are to help. Because the easiest way to get on the path to where you want to be is to find someone who's already there. Any of you want to do these weird careers? I'm sure someone's been there before you. Want to start a restaurant? Find someone else who did. Want to be a fashion designer? Find someone else who did. Want to learn jewelry? Call me, I'll put you in touch with Sarama. <laughs> it's no big deal. What did you do? What were the mistakes? What were the hardships? How much money should I have? How much money shouldn't I have? Should I work out of my home? Should I get an office? What should I do? Can I do it part time? Imagine you were to take control of everything. Everything. Your health, your education, your employment. We talk about opportunities. Entrepreneurship is the opportunity. Go to a bunch of friends with a business idea. Take responsibility. A career? You want a career? What's the career going to look like? Take responsibility. You want to get healthier? Put down the chocolate bar. Take responsibility. You want to do better in class? Sit at your desk. Study. Take responsibility. Life doesn't get easier. All right? If you read any success story, any book, they all took responsibility. They all created the opportunity that they wanted in their life. Because you will all get jobs. You will all get jobs. Mush mushkila. But will you get a passion? Yeah. Will you get a job you love? No. Because if I have a company and I hire you, I want you to do what I want you, what I want you to do. Why would I give you a job to come and do anything that you wanted? 
Right? So don't get stuff mixed up. You will get a job. But the dream, what's in your heart, what's in your soul, what's an extension of who you are, you need to do that. So don't be disappointed when you get your first job and you realize it's not everything you imagined it would be. Because it's not supposed to be. It's everything they want it to be. Now, one thing I told myself is I need to reprioritize the things that impact my life. I needed to stop letting the negative things in my life take control. I have a wife that I love. I have kids that I adore. I have a home. I have family. I have friends. I have a skill set that I believe that I can help people. Let that be my source of happiness. Let that be my source of joy. So redefine success, what it means to you. Really take the time to define that to you. And live your life to a standard where success is not about getting an A or an A plus or a B plus. It's not about the fancy job. It's not about your GPA, man. It's simply one thing to me. It's about being able to wake up in the morning and feel love. It's about living a life that brings me joy and happiness to me and to my family and to people like yourselves. And I'm sorry, but if there's people on Twitter or people outside or wherever they are that's got a problem with that, the one thing I always remind myself, yeah, that's your problem. <laughs> so whatever you're doing in life, do something that brings you joy and love. And if people have got a problem with that, that's their problem, not yours.